Today's brains are chronically overloaded, and they really just haven't evolved to keep up with the demands of the modern day world. Even though humans physically worked harder in the past, today we've got a much greater cognitive load. We have a greater number of tasks we need to get done in a day, and we're constantly switching between them. Overall, we've got a lot more to do and a lot less help to get it all done. Author Cal Newport has a solution to this unsustainable overload that's leading to chronic stress and burnout, and he calls it slow productivity. This is what slow productivity is, and this is how you can use it in your own life to reduce your overall stress, increase your overall well-being, and ironically, actually increase your overall productivity. So Cal Newport offers several suggestions when it comes to adopting the philosophy of slow productivity, and the first one is to do fewer things. Doing fewer things instantly frees up mental space, and it gives your brain the time and the space to actually process what it's been working on and allowing you to create higher quality output. Now there's some conflicting research, but generally speaking, the research says that the human brain can effectively handle no more than two to three projects. Some research says up to five projects at a time for optimum productivity. Now for me personally, two to three projects is about my max. Five projects would just be an absolute no. Now the key here is to put some extra time into your planning so that you can properly prioritize what you need to work on currently and then deferring everything else until those one or two chosen current projects are complete. It's also really important to resist the urge to multitask. Studies show that multitasking impairs your brain's executive functioning. So even though it might feel like you're getting more done because you're working on multiple things at once, it actually overall decreases your productivity. Research mentioned in the American Psychological Association says that constant switching between tasks like this can slow your productivity by as much as 40%. And of course, this also includes constant email checking, uh, keeping up with Slack messages, and you know all those millions of other notifications that are constantly coming in on our phones. Now, another key to slow productivity is making time for what Cal calls deep work. Deep work happens when you cut off all distractions and enter a state of deep, focused concentration for a set amount of time. Now, studies have shown that your brain only has about four hours of focused work a day in it, so it's really important to protect that time and use it toward moving your most brain taxing tasks forward. For me, that means using that time for writing, ideating, creating, and working on tasks that directly move my goals forward. Admin, answering emails, all of that other low leverage stuff, that can happen outside of those precious four hours. Are you enjoying these tips so far? If so, please hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified next time I put out one of these videos, you can go ahead and hit the bell. Now the next tip is to work in a natural pace. So rather than rushing through all of your to-dos, just slow down and really focus on getting in that deep work first thing in the morning, or whenever your most productive time of day is. For most of us, that is going to be first thing in the morning. That's the point where you wanna get those most important tasks done. And by most important, I don't mean most urgent. I mean the ones that are directly tied to a current goal that you have, and that's going to make the biggest difference in moving whatever that goal is forward. And again, you wanna leave all of that sort of mindless admin stuff for after that chunk of focused deep work time. You also wanna take regular, frequent, tech-free breaks. So again, research suggests taking at least a 10 minute break every 60 to 90 minutes. You also wanna create a container around your working hours. Ideally, you really wanna be keeping the same days and hours where possible. This lets you more fully shut off after the work day is done and let your brain get the rest it needs to recharge for the following day. Finally, you wanna obsess over quality. Now this is really good news for all of us perfectionists out there who kind of lean towards this anyways. Now of course we don't want to obsess to the point of never actually putting any of our work out there, but when you're doing fewer things, making time for deep work, and then working at a natural pace, you are naturally going to have a little bit more time to create your work to higher standards. This way you can really work on honing your craft and becoming a true expert in your field. Now you can apply this to your thinking as well. Really slowing down and opening up that mental space is going to allow you to have higher quality ideas and make better quality decisions. So what is your take on this whole concept of slow productivity? Does this sound like something that could be a useful philosophy for you to adopt in your own working life? Let me know in the comments below. And if this whole concept really resonates with you, I want to invite you to join my Less But Better newsletter. 
This is a business and lifestyle newsletter that comes out every Wednesday and it is dedicated specifically to all you secretly sensitive entrepreneurs out there. I've left a link to that down below as well. And of course, if you like this video, please hit the like button, consider subscribing and Again, hit that bell if you wanna be notified every time I put out one of these videos. You can watch this video next on how to embrace the anti-hustle culture movement. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.